Welcome to the MPG Podcast, where your host, John Gravio, talks racing, driving, training, and cars with Newman Watts racing driver, Jordan Missick. And now, here's John and Jordan. Hello, everybody. I'm John Grabiel, along with Jordan Missick here on the MPG podcast here. It is September 21st, and Jordan, you're on vacation somewhere, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I am at my uh, girlfriend's house, just sitting right now outside in my uh, car for a little bit to do this podcast with you. So, John, it's always a pleasure to be with you again, and uh, look forward to speaking with you on this uh, next episode. Yeah, well, it's going to be a great show. Uh, we got a lot of things to talk about, and I, I appreciate you uh, joining us here. And uh, I haven't had a ride in that car, but that car, the interior of that car looks fantastic. Yeah, no, it's a <laughs> very good ride. Yeah, your son Mitchell's had a couple rides in this thing, so you know he's a uh, he's kind of used to this thing. It's a very nice car. Um, I really like it a lot, and uh, helps me get from point A to point B, just like every other mobile does. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and it sounds great, too. So, anyway, let's do a quick little recap. Um, <laughs> since the last time we talked, we had that little, um, if you guys go back and watch, we had that little um, uh, air in the in the video just a little bit. Yeah. But uh, um, the content was fantastic, and I appreciate you getting your, your teammate all squared away and getting on there. Yep. Um, right. So, we've got some testing out of the way since then. But this past weekend, well, I get yesterday, September 20th, I guess. Uh, well, no, even the week before. Yeah. So, <laughs> got to go back a couple so, of Yeah, we got to go. We got to go back. Um, so back on the, I think it was the 19th. Yeah. Uh, no, the 13th, 13th, 13th of September. Uh, we had it at the Audubon Country Club hosted the Ignite Challenge, yes. which is a uh, traveling uh, cart 206 cart race for uh, the Ignite Challenge, the Margay Ignite series. Uh, who you you are a former winner of that your rookie year, right? You won the whole thing. Yes. So my first full season, I did the Ignite Challenge was back in 2018 in the Ignite Senior, and I uh, went on to win the championship that year. Uh, came down to the last race, came down to the last uh, couple laps too. Um, so my first race in that series, I finished 10th at TNT, and then I went on a string of three third place finishes. Um, was needing a win or a good second place finish. And then my uh, championship rival, which was Evan Stommer at the point who I'm now really good friends with, um, needed a bad race from him. He So I did the math and I was, I needed to win the race and he needed to finish 10th or worse. Um, he ended up getting in a first uh, lap incident and I went on to win the race and he eventually, I think, finished 12th. So I was able to get the championship by just a couple of points over him at the very last second. Wow. Yeah, that was great. And, uh, that was a Genesis, uh, for, for my family to, to join the Ignite Challenge race, uh, race series. So we travel around through the Midwest at different car tracks. Mm -hmm. And so this, um, uh, your F3 racing doesn't allow you that much flexibility in your schedule. However, you were home when it came to our home track, the Audubon yep. Country Club. And, uh, you went out there, uh, boy, I think there was, 25 i think there's 25 entrance 24 trees into the into the uh senior division and uh you dominated the first race yeah well i mean i wouldn't say it was total domination i got um got a pretty good jump um got into the lead in the first couple laps uh, i was starting p2 on the outside of ken williams so in the first turn all i do is just try to roll as much momentum as i can to stay side by side with him for the next double left handers so from there i was able to get in the lead and then about two laps into the race, he was able to get by me again. And then from there, I just kind of solidified myself being in second place and was content to just push him the entire way, uh, the rest of the way. So it was just a matter of who the people behind me were going to be and how many fluctuating position they were going to do and if they were going to be content riding the whole entire race. So it kind of worked out, um, lost a little bit of ground sometimes. Um, some people wanted to try to get a little antsy, try to make some moves here and there, try to get around me. Um, I kind of held my own though a little bit, but in doing so lost a little bit of time. So I just tried to tell everybody that was behind me, Hey, let's get our act together. Let's try to go catch Ken again and be there for the end. So eventually we did, um, caught up to him about two laps to go, rode around for one more lap. And then, but he last lap, um, told him I was going to point to the inside. 
and then went to the inside, and it was about a freight train of three of us. Got by Ken going into turn one, and then I just played the defensive game from there. And then it was everybody just trying to dive bomb in the corners, trying to make as much as they can happen. And, you know, eventually you run out of room, and that's exactly what happened. And had a huge little bit of pile up behind me at the top of turn number three, and then I was able to just kind of escape from it all and ride, ride home a nice, smooth victory. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, it was fantastic. It was great to see. Uh, I think one thing when you can see, uh, when we're looking at the Audubon Country Club cart track, we could see almost everything, but, but a couple turns in the back. And uh, so for me, you know, from a, uh, a fan and to be able to see your racecraft this year, when we can see it on, on a cart track, because, you know, on a big track, you can't see every single thing yeah. that's going on. But on the cart track, I really enjoy watching your, watching your racecraft and watching and see how you're setting it up, setting everything up, you're testing, uh, you're probing, you might say, to see what can happen. And then, um, yeah, it's pretty cool from my standpoint to be able to watch, to be able to watch your race. And that, yeah, that was fantastic. Your home, home track and you defended it well. And, uh, you went on the win. That was awesome. We were super excited about that. Uh, followed that up with a race, two races actually yesterday in our local series and uh now those were dominating wins both of those were dominating wins i'm gonna have to say uh uh there was a a full a full race and then a makeup race at the end and uh you went out there and uh you did fantastic you just you you know your starts were amazing your your i mean everything was was real well you did didn't qualify here's one interesting thing you know you didn't qualify uh the fastest but from the from the start um uh, I mean, your race craft is just, so, it's, it's so advanced, you know, and the way you set everything else up, you took off immediate lead from the uh, rest of history. Yeah, no, I wasn't planning on uh, certainly the first race jumping out to an early lead as I can, but it just kind of helped in that way. I, you know, I got a pretty decent start, was able to push um, Owen early past Chris Sardinic at the beginning. And then from there was planning on just falling behind early, Owen, but you know, like, still was getting a run and Owen kind of left the door open. So I said, well, screw it. We're going to go for it. And it just happened to work out and just took off from there. But um, I'm pleased to see uh, a lot of the guys, including your son as well, starting to close the gap up to me. So um, it's really nice to see the little progression that a lot of these carters have come and uh, hopefully to make the racing a lot more interesting, a little much more closer. <laughs> I know that <laughs> people who dominate races want to say that, but you know, just for me and just to have kind of have fun and just race a bunch of people. It's always fun to, race against someone you know even if they're your fiercest competitor or just a good old buddy of yours it's always fun to be side by side with someone yeah i mean we can we can touch a little bit yeah you've been coaching my son uh all, all season and um he's getting closer and closer and you know we got we got two more races i don't know if you're going to make the two more two more races but uh um you know a, a chance to see you know how proud will i be a chance to see you and him uh, you know, duking it out and him learning from you. And he's, I think he's smart enough to get behind you and stay behind you and see what you got to, you got to teach him. <laughs> I gotta be honest. <laughs> yeah. The good thing though. Yeah. 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 So anyway, uh, also exciting. Um, so you're home, but soon you're leaving for F3 racing in, uh, Sebring down in this, in central Florida. Um, yeah. And so, so, so tell me your schedule this, uh, this week. Yes. So today is Monday, September 21st, when we are recording this, um, this show will probably get posted uh, tomorrow in the morning or sometime during tomorrow. So it'll be Tuesday, September 22nd, when you viewers will be watching this. If you're watching normal time, I will be catching on a flight Southwest airlines courtesy of, thank you very much. Um, on Wednesday, uh, the September 23rd, I will be flying out to Fort Myers uh, for Sebring. Um, I'll stay tonight at my Florida house that we have down there um, in the Northport area. And then we'll go from there to um, Sebring International Raceway on Thursday, the 24th. And that will be loading day. Um, so we'll just go in, do a track walk and everything that day and kind of assess the paddock area and how the track's going to be um, condition wise, what's changed, what hasn't. And then Friday will be our two practices, uh, two 30 minute practice sessions that will go actually. Yeah, two 30-minute practice sessions that will go throughout the day on Friday. And then Saturday will be a nice practice uh, qualifying session in the morning, followed by our first race 
and then Sunday will be two races, one in the morning and then one in the afternoon to wrap up the weekend. So down in Sebring, it's in Central Florida. What uh, you've raced there, Radical race there before? Yeah, I only raced there once. It was a uh, PBOC event, um, so it's multi-class cars and everything. And then Radical was there doing like a little bit of a Radical race themselves, so they did have a Radical class there. So yeah, I took the uh, Radical down there in about January of last year and just kind of drove that track just to kind of get a feel for it. And it was a very fun track. It was probably one of my uh, favorite tracks that I'd be a part of. So. Going into Sebring this weekend, I'm very excited because this is probably going to be one of my favorite tracks on the calendar this year. Yeah, I mean, everybody loves Sebring. It's a historic raceway there. They have 24 hours of Sebring, 12 hours of Sebring coming up. Um, We're actually going to be, you know, our team is going to be going down there in November also. So you can set the the pace for us down there as we we get down there for for some, some testing. And I guess it's rough. I guess that's the only downside of it. It's on an old airport, right? Is that is that the story? Yeah. So turn the back side of the back straightaway before you get the start finish lines, where turns thir- seventeen and turn one are at on the racetrack, are the two roughest corners on the track, if not in motor racing, um, <laughs> just because of the way it's like ar- like it's architectured. Because um, that those two sections are on airport tarmac. Um, old airport tarmac, kind of like um, the old Cleveland International Raceway was, I believe, back in the old days. And then when you go from turn one and heading towards turn two is where you made the transition back from tarmac to asphalt. And the once that you hit that transition, it's pretty smooth once you hit the tarmac to asphalt uh, transition. So it's just going to be interesting how the F3 suspension and chassis is going to handle going over the rough terrain and bumps of Sebring International Raceway. We're actually going to be, for my car, putting about a, like maybe a quarter to maybe a half inch of foam on both sides of my horse collar and then maybe in the rear just to kind of keep my head from like slamming up against the horse collar itself and to kind of give a little bit of padding for security so my head's not just banging up against everything because of the rough terrain of Sebring offers. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So so not only is the car setup important, it's the driver setup too, you know, <laughs> keeping the keeping the driver comfortable. That's that's important too. Awesome, yeah. So, uh, so uh, both uh, your teammates, so uh, uh, Newman Watch Racing, and uh, you and uh, Victor Franzoni, the uh, your teammate, will be down there, right? Is he, he's going to be joining you for that race? He'll be down there on uh, Thursday with me, so we'll be down there the whole weekend. Okay, great. And so, um, h- how much? So when you get down there, how much? different do you set the mo is the is the engine tuned differently for different things so we're so at the autobahn for example the autobahn country club we're at 600 uh 600 feet altitude down there at sebring i'm sure it's close to zero close to sea level is there a lot of difference in that honda motor when you when you get those altitude changes or no i don't think um motor wise no i think a lot of it comes down to air temperature wise obviously like when you get to for instance, here at the track, this past weekend was probably one of the best weekends you could have been on the racetrack because it was a little bit cooler than it has been all summer. So temperatures were a lot cooler. It was more horsepower. It generates a little bit more horsepower when the temps are cooler. So you're going to generate a little bit more speed, get a little more torque in the engine, and you're going to get a little bit faster lap time. So that's why this past weekend at the Audubon was probably the best time to get laps in because you were turning the fastest times of the year. Whereas now we go to maybe Sebring compared to where we are at Audubon, the lap times down there will probably be a little bit quicker. Um, the engine will probably be a little bit quicker because, yeah, you are close to the sea level, probably altitude wise, but it also could be a little bit cooler there. You know, we're going there in the fall, so it's going to be a little bit cooler temps. Horsepower is going to be up a little bit more and the grip levels are going to be down a little bit, too. But they could also be rising as the temps rise a little bit. So, so a lot of environmental uh, aspects come into the horsepower and torque of the motor when the temperature starts to get hot or cold. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, so um, race Saturday, and then, so three total races this weekend, right? Right, yes, three total races. One Saturday in the afternoon, and one in the morning on Sunday morning, and then one in the afternoon on Sunday as well. Yeah, it's so we can watch those races uh, at F3 Americas. You can go there to get the live stream. Um, go to fanracing.live. Fanracing.live. It's the Formula Americas Network. Um, If you just type Google in Formula Americas Network, you should get the link and everything. You may have to register like your email or something just to get the uh, races, but it's free of charge and everything. So 
no big deal. You just got to put your stuff in, information in, and you'll be able to watch um, the rest of the FR America season from there. If you want to look at past race results and everything, you can go to the FR America's website for those. Um, the points standing should be up there as well. And then also, as always, follow my social media to keep track of what's going on throughout the race weekend because I'll be posting for sure. Yeah, uh, outstanding. So this um, uh, couple races we have, what's the rest of the schedule like for the rest of the year? So the rest of the schedule is going to be Sebring this weekend. And then the following weekend, right after that, we're taking a straight trip from Sebring to Homestead. So it's a back-to-back weekend for us. We'll race the Homestead Miami Speedway, the infield portion of the road course. So we race in through turns one and two in the infield and then enter the back straightaway, then go to the infield in three and four. Um, so that'll be Homestead. And then later in October, we'll wrap up the season finale over at Circuit of Americas. Okay. Uh, Circuit of America is there in, in Austin, Texas. Correct. Fantastic. So you will not, so you're going to probably stay in Florida that entire time? I'll probably stay in Florida for the next two weeks. Yes. So I won't be here for two weekends. Um, we'll be in Florida and then I'll return probably the second weekend for the second weekend of October. All right. Fantastic. Okay. So, uh, Google Jordan Mystic Racing and yep. you can get all of the social media sites the YouTube channel, the uh, Instagram, Facebook, everything is up to date. And please join us this weekend as we watch you uh, get on the podium again. Uh, yes. had an, I think an incredible, incredible rookie season. And we're going to see that continue here with uh, three more races, right? Yes, exactly. And stay tuned to my website for sure, because we might be coming out with a special merchandise package for everyone as well to, um, anybody interested if they want hats shirts or anything we'll be coming out with a new special merchandise package and links on my website as well for all you new users yeah that's fantastic and uh i do i i want some some jordan mystic racing uh and uh mystic performance group newman watts racing yeah. uh swag yeah i want i want all that stuff and uh so if you're interested in in sponsoring a uh a, a fantastic driver here in jordan mystic you can uh, get in contact with yourself or yep. you can also uh, just go to Jordan Mystic Racing there and then uh, you'll get all your represent- representatives in- involved and contact the, the, the sponsor and everything else. So, uh, yep. so if you're out there and you want to sponsor a race car driver, this is a great way, a great representative of your product, uh, your service, and a chance to, to, to highlight that in the F3 America's racing. Definitely no short of exposure over here for sure. <laughs> all right george thanks so much for being on the show and best of luck this weekend thank you so much john appreciate it as always thank you